Coming up on Two and a Half Geeks, Asus upgrades the Transformer Prime, AMD tries its hand at making a processor that makes Intel blush, and a tiny alien were a computer, and a lot more coming right up. The bar has been set wicked fast. It's rocked in the benchmarks. We're gonna up the ante uh, a little bit. Processing power, I kinda understand this. Hey, I'm Aya Zaktar alongside Dave Altavilla and Marco Cipetta. How are you guys doing, you hot hardware knuckleheads? Oh, we're doing <laughs> great. Better than it should be allowed. Marco? Yep, no complaints here. Doing nope. all right? No complaints. That's a smart man. Didn't say nothing was wrong. Won't complain about it. Ah, I like the exactly. way you think. Let's, exactly. Let's get right to it. Let's talk about an update to the Transformer Prime. You know, one of the draws about Android devices is that, hey, they get upgraded every now and then. And the tablet that that Asus put out there was a really sexy piece of hardware, but didn't have the latest uh, software. Android 4.0 finally hit the Transformer Prime. Dave, what can you tell me about that? Yeah, so it certainly was a, a nice drop, and, and the folks at Asus, you have to hand it to them, uh, uh, sort of uh, taking from their roots of uh, supporting regular BIOS updates for their motherboards. Uh, these folks do a real good job with supporting uh, existing tablet devices with uh, next generation software, Android uh, operating system software, and uh, firmware updates for the product as well. So, um, you know, really pleased with, with how Asus supports their products here. Uh, I guess I'll just toss that out there gratis, if you will. But um, yeah, the, the Android uh, 4.0 ice cream sandwich update that came to the Transformer Prime, um, you know, it's, it's really about the little things with this drop. Um, you know, certainly the Android operating, uh, uh, operating system experience, the user interface, hasn't changed a whole lot. I mean, there's been some nice tweaks. One of the things that jumps out at you right away, or at least for me, one of the things I appreciated right away w was simple. The change in font, believe it or not. They have this uh, new Roboto font uh, that uh, Google went to, and it's a much easier to read, larger spaced out font. It's just cleaner uh, to me on, on the tablet. And so that's important. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a little thing. It's just a font change. Well, yeah, actually, it makes a difference. Um, but uh, also with that, you get a number of enhancements, uh, general performance enhancements, um, you know, just multitasking in general, switching between applications, swiping between um, home screen and application screens and, and widgets and all that good stuff happens a little bit more fluidly, a little bit snappier. Uh, virtual uh, buttons in the UI, um, easier to create folders, uh, sort of a drag and drop style um, uh, folder uh, set up there. Uh, a customizable launcher, pins and, and zoom functionality in the calendar. Um, better voice recognition, uh, face unlock, that's another uh, feature um, where you can actually have it, uh, take a picture of yourself and have it do image recognition on your face. Nice little feature there, um, you know, I guess perhaps a little bit of a, um, you know, uh, a gimmick, if you will, but um, certainly something for security. Uh, data usage detail, um, built-in photo editor, refreshed people app, Android Beam, which is their uh, near field, um, a communications service uh, that's available now, and a hardware accelerated UI, and that's really where you see performance enhancements, uh, things like you know scrolling in the web and rendering web pages. Uh, just in general, uh, the snappiness, the responsiveness of the UI itself, whether it be browsing or or even navigating through applications, is is just a little bit uh, snappier. So uh, certainly a nice update, um, and it's good to see it come out to. Uh, one of our most beloved tablets of the season, the Tegra 3 powered uh, Asus Transformer Prime. Now, Ice Cream Sandwich has been out for a couple of months with uh, the release of the Galaxy Nexus phone. I believe this is one of the first tablets to actually get an, a version of Ice Cream Sandwich. Uh, did Asus do any kind of customization to the UI? Uh, because it's supposed to be so great. The Google, just the flat version of it without any skins is supposed to be so polished. Did Asus do anything to, I guess, polish it some more, or did they go with the stock experience? No, Asus does some some nice things um, with their version, and it's really you know stuff that they um, 
sort of tailored for their hardware more than anything. Uh, certainly, the, the Asus, uh, the, the Transformer Prime has a Super IPS Plus display, which allows uh, 600 nits of brightness uh, in Super IPS Plus mode. So they give you some additional settings that you can uh, activate via a, a small widget in the control panel on the uh, right bottom uh, control panel of um, uh, Android, uh, you know, the ice cream sandwich, uh, you know, Android 4.0. Um, you get other things like uh, screen capture settings that are custom to Asus, system performance settings, balance mode, normal mode, and power saving mode. Um, and, you know, these are all just sort of, uh, you know, Asus tweaks and little apps. Again, just a, a sort of a, a follow-on and a, and a takeoff from where they've uh, developed their own uh, ability to uh, tweak software and, and utilities for the motherboard market. Just, you know, uh, sort of a, you know, a takeoff on that where you've got an operating system, you've got a piece of hardware, and you want to just turn the knobs a little bit. That's what uh, Asus does well. And so, you know, just a few extra bells and whistles that are added in. Um, nothing crazy, but just makes the experience that much better and a little bit more customizable. On to the world of AMD. You know, I hear they're still making processors, uh, even though I don't think they've been <laughs> relevant in processors for a while. Um, so let's, let's uh, throw the floor to Marco about the AMD A8 3870K. And, and unlocked Lano processors, quad core, it's their APU, so it's got the built in graphics. So you could, Marco, should I sound as depressed as I am right now? <laughs> you know, I, I honestly don't, wow. don't think that you should. You shouldn't be depressed. If all you factor in is the high end, yeah, you know, Intel's got this commanding lead. But at their respective price points, AMD is still competitive. They just, you know, they have to compete on price. Um, this particular chip, I actually think is pretty fun. So. When Lano first launched, it was for, you know, mainstream desktops. They, they weren't unlocked. If you're an enthusiast, you know, all you could really do is tweak a little voltage and, and maybe up your base clock, you know, your uh, hypertransport frequency uh, to overclock the chip. There wasn't really much to tinker with. Now, the 3970K changes that because it's, it's an unlocked chip. So it only has a 100 megahertz bump over the 3850, so 2.9 gigahertz versus three gigahertz. So in its stock form, you know, not that big of a performance improvement. It's the same 400 uh, shader core Radeon graphics integrated into the APU as well. Um, stock clock for that is, is 600 megahertz. But with the 3970K, because it's unlocked, if you plug it into the right motherboard, uh, we use the uh, ASUS, uh, ASUS motherboard that we featured in the launch article, you can now tweak multipliers for, for not only the CPU, but for the graphics. So right out of the box with just a slight voltage tweak and a basic air cooler, a couple of tweaks to the UEFI, and I took that 600 megahertz graphics core and had it running over 800 megahertz. And the CPU itself overclocked easily to 3.5 gigahertz, and it's only 144 bucks. So no, it's not gonna break any benchmark records, but you can build a fun little system that can run basically anything that's out there, maybe not at the highest res you know, with all of the you know, bells and whistles turned on. So you could build you know, a nice system that's fun to tweak for you know, not a whole lot of money. I don't, I don't know, Mark. It just kind of sounds like you're, you know, you, you're taking a bicycle and you're putting, on, you know, you're putting those little cards in the spokes and you're saying it's just <laughs> as good as a motorcycle. It's, it's, it's a nice little ride. It'll get you where you're going. And it really is hard to beat on price. Uh, is there anything you'd like to add? To yeah, you know, I, I, I disagree with that. I disagree with that. He's Not a bitter everybody. man, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he, just, he drinks that Kool-Aid, man. So not everybody can afford a high-end CPU, right? But most of the people, if you're an enthusiast, if you, kinda, if you know what you want in a PC, you want a good performing CPU and you want good graphics. So if you were to take a similar price Sandy Bridge, if you're not going to be able to spring for a discrete GPU, if you take a hundred and forty dollar Sandy Bridge chip, the graphics pale in comparison to this thing. They pale in comparison. And let's say you were going to spring for a fifty dollar GPU, nothing crazy, just a, you know a fifty dollar discrete card. You plug that into a Sandy Bridge machine, it's going to perform at you know X level. You plug it into this to a, the the Lano based system. As long as it's you know the proper class Radeon, you can now crossfire the two. So the graphics performance may even be double that 
of what it would have been with just a discrete card. So now there, there's definitely advantages here. There's price advantages. It's fun to tweak. The graphics are better. You know, is it going to blow everybody away? No, but it, it's a it's a good chip. I, I like this processor. You're not going to change my mind. Oh, I just like doing that just to just to get you guys impassioned about certain things. <laughs> I think, look, flat out, I love competition. I want AMD to kick Intel's butt, and I want Intel to do the same. I want to see a lot of competition out there, and it's good to know all this stuff flat out. If if <laughs> if you defend it that well, especially when I attack it like that, it makes me learn a lot more, and that's a technique <laughs> I learned in school. So uh, if, if I sound like I hate something, I probably am really rooting for it. So like, um, don't, don't take it so bad, gentlemen. It's just part of the show and audience at home. I love you guys. You know that. I love all this stuff. I love tech. That's why I'm in this. Don't be a kiss up now. There we go. Now we can balance it out. Let's talk about a tiny Alienware machine. The X51. It's a small form factor PC. Now I've seen some Alienware uh, desktops out there. I'm pretty sure I saw one with Dave and Dave you looked like a toy next to one of these things. <laughs> one of them had like fins on it and it was, it was, uh, they were uh, motorized and all kinds of things. But this is the complete opposite. This is the, this is the X51 from the, I couldn't tell because I'd had, I hadn't held this thing or seen it in person, but compared to a keyboard, it kind of looked like the size of an Xbox. Is that right? <laughs> I, I'm not sure I've ever been described as a toy before. Um, but yeah, Alienware stuff usually is big and bold and bad, and uh, this little machine is anything but. It is absolutely about the size of an Xbox. Uh, it, it, and as a matter of fact, you know, the, the, the folks at Alienware, the division of Dell, um, you know, they intentionally designed the form factor, the 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 general footprint of it, but also the design aesthetics of it to very much uh, look like uh, a game console. That was the intent. No question about it. They, they make no apologies on that. And so, yeah, it's ab absolutely about the size of an Xbox 360 or perhaps a PlayStation 3. will nestle in nicely uh, as a uh, home theater PC in your entertainment center or perhaps just a, a game PC. Uh, and uh, what we came to find out was that this little box... Uh, external uh, power supply now, external 330-watt AC adapter, big power brick sits outside this thing, much like an Xbox 360 power brick, which is also rather large, um, with a Core i5, 2320, 3 GHz uh, quad-core processor, 8 gig of RAM, and an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 555, a Western Digital uh, 1 terabyte 7200 RPM hard drive. This thing kicked butt. We were thoroughly impressed, and it's quiet as a mouse to boot. So this, let me, let's talk about a little bit about this external power supply. I mean, that, that's one of the ways that uh, Microsoft made the Xbox so small is by taking basically the si something about half the size of the Xbox and putting it outside. Uh, did you find any, any, uh, anything, any other compromises they had to make to make this thing so small? Because uh, if you compare, like I was comparing to the Xbox in lots of different ways, compared to the Xbox, technically, uh, the thing is, the Alienware's got actually modern graphics in it versus that old, old thing that's in the 360. Any compromises in the X51? No, and, 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 and that's what's interesting about the design is you, when you look at it, you might think, oh, okay, let's take some mobile uh, technology, some mobile components, mobile processor, mobile graphics chip, uh, mobile hard drive. Maybe there's a two-and-a-half-inch hard drive in there. But in actuality, it's a mini ITX motherboard. Uh, with a full desktop processor. Again, it's a quad-core, Sandy Bridge Core i5 processor, 3 gigahertz, quad-core, 6 meg of cache on board, 8 gig of standard DDR3-1333 system memory, and a standard 3.5-inch 7200 RPM hard drive. And finally, the, the icing on the cake, and we expected to see a, a single-slot graphics card in this thing, dual-slot, full-size, dual-slot graphics card, Stuck in the side of this thing rides just above the um, the hard drive. I'm gonna I'm gonna pick it up right now. Sorry, I'm I'm off camera a little bit, but but here it is. It's gonna fill up the frame, but <laughs> but it's about the size of an Xbox, and it's got a full size graphics card on board, a full size hard drive, a desktop processor, and eight gigs of standard DDR3 1333 system memory. So the performance numbers were very much like a full size system. And that's what impressed us so much. We compared it to the likes of Dell's XPS series of desktops, an HP desktop, and an iBuyPower gaming desktop. Again, 
full size mid and full size ATX uh, size uh, cases and systems that we compare the numbers to. And more often than not, this little Alienware rig actually bested those full size systems. And so, yes, they took the power supply, this rather large 330 watt brick and made it external and that's how they had so much more room inside the the tiny chassis um it's only about a foot square sort of and maybe uh oh geez let's see what how high it is it's uh uh it's like four inches you know tall thick if you laid it on its on its edge um and so yeah you know that's how they did it they took the power supply have it external you get a ton more real estate inside the system, a lot of heat, you know, 330 watts of componentry, uh, you know, power supply componentry that would be generating heat otherwise, and uh, you, you stick it outside. And, and so this thing now sits nicely in, in your entertainment center. The power supply plugs in, you tuck it away, and you're good to go. And the frame rate is you know, up through 1080p uh, with high image quality, totally playable in just about any game we threw at it, including... Leading edge titles like Batman, uh, Arkham Asylum, or excuse me, Arkham City, uh, that's the previous generation, Arkham City, uh, DX11 titles with all the eye candy and physics turn up. Uh, this thing really did well. So, thoroughly impressed. And I guess actually what I was most impressed about with this system, I'm excited about it, you can tell. Uh, very quiet, too. I mean, when it's idling, you literally have to lean up to it to hear that it's running. When it's under a full gaming workload, it's moderately loud, but it's not as loud as my son's Xbox 360. I can tell you that. On to the world of graphics cards, and I'm not going <laughs> to bash AMD at all, other than for their intelligent... I will say they had an intelligent purchase by buying ATI. Okay, so I, mean, <laughs> I know Marco's got the AMD Radeon HD 7950 Tahiti Pro DirectX 11 GPU. Now, I'm going to base this purely on the number. 7950 sounds like it's kind of a higher-end card. Not a, like a yes. So th this is see, yes. It the is. marketing is working. Tell me about this it. This is the uh, <laughs> this is the bad boy right here. If you were paying attention a few weeks ago, this guy looks exactly like the seventy nine seventy, except for right here. There's only two six pin power connectors on the seventy nine fifty. The seventy nine seventy has an eight pin and a six pin. So yeah, the um, seventy nine fifty is the counterpart to the seventy nine seventy. One notch below it in. Uh, AMD's product stack and this guy basically swoops in and you know kind of renders the GTX 580 somewhat irrelevant um, it's comes in at 449 bucks so it's not cheap um, when the 6950 launched it was only 299 so from the previous generation to this one prices haven't really dropped too much unfortunately but for 449 it undercuts the GTX 580 and it outperforms it more often than not. There are some corner cases where the GTX 580 can barely pull ahead or basically tie. But you end up with a, you know, with this guy, you have a three gig frame buffer, uh, iFinity support. It's quieter. It is way lower power than uh, any high-end graphics card we've tested. Um, decent, decent, decent card. Hmm. So 450, that, and, and it's, it's doing really, really well. I'm kind of curious. Um, what is the nearest, I guess, competition for it on the NVIDIA side? The nearest competition it would be the GTX 580. But it's killing um, that, you said. Well, it's not killing it. it. It beats it more often than not, but it's it's a little bit cheaper than the 580. So I would suspect you're going to see prices drop on the 580. Um, the 7950, it's essentially a 7970 with just a, a couple of features in the GPU disabled and slightly lower clocks. Um, it's an 800 megahertz GPU as opposed to, I think it was 925 in the 7970. Um, and some of the shader units and texture units have been disabled. So... You know, these guys just hit 450. GTX 580s are, you know, depends based on rebates. They hover around around 470 to 500 bucks, depending on the model. You know, and considering that the 580 is now now slower than AMD's, you know, second tier product, you're going to see NVIDIA have to drop prices or, you know, just wait until their next gen stuff launches. See, I said nothing negative about AMD there. I did it. So, yeah. Well, you know, actually, I, I, the only real negative, I, I, the only real negative I have with this generation, is that AMD wasn't really aggressive with pricing. 
when the 6970 and 6950 launched, you know, they were 180 to 200 dollars cheaper than these cards are. Now, AMD isn't really doing anything wrong. They it's cheaper than the 580 and it's faster. On the 7970 is the fastest single GPU card you can get. So sure, they 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 should charge a premium. But with previous generations, you know, over the lifetime of a card, prices would kind of, you know, drop steadily. And you know, with, with this time, it didn't really happen with this generation. So you have cards that are 12 months old, 14 months old, selling within striking distance of their launch prices. And now the new stuff comes along, and it's more expensive than the previous gen. So, you know, I just... I. I wish they were more aggressive with pricing. They didn't have to do it based on the competitive landscape. But, you know, the enthusiast in me wants to see, you know, that that fierce competition between these two companies. And it just didn't happen yet. Let's talk about a contest that's wrapping up right now. Dave, your, your uh, New Year's giveaway contest at Hot Hardware is wrapping up. Is that right? Yes. Um, we are down to the uh, the short strokes, as they say. Where, where are we at? Uh, February 3rd. That's like um, Soon. Friday. So... <laughs> yeah, the um, Hot Hardware Gigabyte New Year's giveaway is wrapping up now, uh, where we've got uh, three prizes up for grabs. Uh, Gigabyte GeForce GTX 560 graphics card. Uh, that is a mid-high-end uh, uh, GeForce card uh, by Gigabyte, and uh, certainly will play just about any game you could throw at it, definitely any game you could throw at it at high image quality. Um, a Gigabyte Z68 motherboard, the Gigabyte Z68 XPU D3P motherboard. Uh, that is the second prize for the uh, first runner-up. And uh, a third prize, the second runner-up, will receive a Force K3 keyboard and M6900 uh, Gigabyte mouse. Uh, gaming keyboard and mouse their combination uh, is the third prize. So uh, jump in, uh, make yourself known, comment in the news and uh, in the articles and in the forum. Uh, be a part of the community. That's what we're trying to grow here with these contests uh, to have you make uh, HH your own, so to speak. And you could win some pretty cool swag from our folks, from uh, our friends at uh, Gigabyte. If you'd like to know more about the contest or any of the stories we talked about in today's episode, check out hothardware.com. Everything you need is right there. If you want to go around the web and check out Hot Hardware everywhere else, check out facebook.com slash hothardware or twitter.com slash hothardware or dig.com slash hothardware or even youtube.com slash hothardwarevids for some great reviews and previous episodes. So if you want to like find out what we were opining about a while ago, you can do that at YouTube because it's all right there. It's really nice, a nice little home there. Or again, hothardware.com. Like Just stay at hothardware.com and enjoy your time there because there's lots of cool stuff and uh, impassioned, great reviews and news and and all kinds of silliness. And blogs too. I think you guys actually been using the blogs a lot more recently. Anyway, we do. that wraps up this episode of Two and a Half Geeks. Uh, thanks for stopping by. We'll see everybody next week. We hope. We pray. Yes. <laughs>